and welcome to HealthyHouseplants.com, where we teach you all about gardening in the great indoors. If you'd like to support our show, please use our Amazon affiliate link below. Today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rooting hormone. It's a great houseplant tool. If you're starting plants from cuttings, you can speed up the process and ensure greater success by using rooting hormone. And here is the rooting hormone we're gonna be using today. Uh, there's many uh, different types. I'll put some links below. Um, this, is a, this is a pretty economical one in terms of price. So rooting hormones occur naturally in plants. Um, but as mentioned, you can also get them in rooting hormone that you can buy. They come in powders. This is this one in powder form. They also come in gels and they come in liquids. So for different, various different purposes. If you're rooting in water, you would want to use a liquid. These products provide supplemental amounts of auxin. So auxin is a natural plant hormone that helps with root development. So that's what's that's what you'll find in the in the in the rooting nodes in plants. And we have some rooting nodes on here and I'm going to show you up close a little bit more in a minute too here cuz we're going to show you how to use this uh, rooting hormone. So the uh, as mentioned these are auxins in the, in this product and <clears throat> it, they work on the rooting hormone works on a variety of cuttings this here is a goldfish plant that we're going to do i'm going to show you how to use it on but you can use it on many different types of plants and even and especially using it on ones that are a little harder to root than others just by sticking them in water or sticking them in soil <clears throat> These uh, the rooting hormone increases the odds of successful propagation as mentioned. So some other plants that do really well with this pothos, Chinese evergreen, all the dracaenas, diffenbachia, philodendron, African violet, and then there's more on the list too. But that just gives you some common ones that you can use this on. So when you do use the rooting hormone, you want to be careful with it because you don't want to inhale it and you don't want to really get it on your skin. So just be careful. It is high in that auxin that was mentioned and some other things that, that help it work as well. Another really important thing to remember about rooting hormone is only lasts about a year to 18 months. So you do have to replace it after that time, that period of time, or else it's not going to be that effective or effective at all. So if you do have some rooting hormone you've had around for a while, you're, it's not doing well for you, uh, it's probably because it's too old, because it does work really well <clears throat> when it's nice and, uh, nice and new and ready to go. Okay. So this, I'm going to move this guy out of the way so we can show a little bit closer here. I'm going to get closer and so we can see this process of using the rooting hormone. Okay, so in this here, what I have in here is my propagation mix. And I do have a video where I tell you all about making this propagation mix. Um, I'm linking it below and linking other things that I'm talking about below as well. Okay, so once you have a really good propagation mix <clears throat> and it's moist but not soggy, so this is moist, you can tell it's moist because it's sticking together, but it's not sloppy wet because you don't, definitely don't want sloppy wet, but you do want moist. You're not going to get roots in dry soil for the most part, um, unless you have rains in between, which, you know, you're growing indoors, so that's not going to work, right? So, okay, so what you want to do is you can either use, you can either use a, 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 a brush this is a paint brush so a brush with, with with fine hairs on it which i sometimes use or you can simply dip the cutting into the rooting hormone as well so those are two different ways to do this but the first thing you want to have <clears throat> and i'm going to be going into uh how to cut these off in in another video too actually on uh, Next one will be on pothos, but I'll be doing a lot of different ones on propagating coming up. So this guy, I took off the goldfish plant and you can see up close here, point to it with this since my fingers kind of get in the way, 
there are le there there these were leaf nodes but leaf nodes when you cut them on the stem become root nodes they have the auxins in them and so you're going to boost it with even more auxin from the rooting hormone okay so there's one there and there's one there those are the little bumps you'll find on the side of the stem i'm going to also and you want to clip them off with shears i have to get this oh i knocked over off a leaf which is fine i'm going to cut this a little bit closer okay so I am going to insert this after I apply rooting hormone up to just above the second node. That gives the plant two different opportunities to start growing roots and start growing a really strong root system. You also don't want to leave too much foliage up top, but you do want to leave some foliage up top. It, you, but you, what you don't want is the plant trying to sustain the up top foliage while it's trying to make roots. It's too much energy going there. So this one does have a little bit of new growth on top. Um, it, it's a kind of a toss up whether to remove that or not because the plant does photosynthesize with the more leaf, leaf surface it has because that leaf surface gets sun and that then causes photosynthesis and the production of chlorophyll and also uh, energy for the plant to grow and to root. So I could could cut that off. I think I'm going to leave this one for now. A, a really good thing to do would be to cut another one and do it shorter and do ha so you have a couple different ones to, to compare. So I am going to show you here to do this. Now, one of the reasons why I do like the, the paintbrush method is because when you go to stick it in, which is often advised, it does it, it, it does work, but it's kind of clumsy, but you can see it, it does work. I, the paintbrush I find is a little easier and not so messy. Now, when you do get it in there really good, you're, what you're trying to do is coat those, those, those uh, nodes, right? And then tap it off, because you don't want too much, but you do want enough. <laughs> so don't tap it too hard, but you do want some on there. Okay, now I've got it on there. I'm going to insert with a clean dowel and I'm going to put that into just just as I mentioned just below that second node put it in there now one thing you can do is you can prop it up a little bit as well a lot of times you can with this mix I has sand in it so it gives it it holds things up so there there it is standing up now and you want to try not to have a bunch of the auxin a bunch of the hormone above on that part so that's why even the brush makes it a little easier okay so there we go on that so i can go ahead and fill this in with more um, I'll do one more right now and then cut off those top leaves as indicated. I would do coming up here, finding one on the plant. Okay, so here's a nice one. I'll show you in a sec. <laughs> okay, so the you can see it here. It's got lots on the bottom there. So I'm going to take all of those off because those are all nodes and we would not stick that under the soil. We're gonna have a lot of opportunity with this one with lots of nodes. See it all up and down there. Now, there's two leaves here and two leaves here. So not that much, not as much as the other one has. So I'm gonna try this with just the four leaves. You would want at least two leaves, because like I said, it needs to photosynthesize besides creating those roots. Okay, so we've got that. Now I'm gonna use the paintbrush method this time. Then I can get a little more directed just around the nodes themselves rather than the whole stem. Then two, you can just tap, lightly tap 
to get the excess off. Once again, using the dowel, putting it into just, you can kind of work with this, uh, work with this tool as well as you go. Then you can also bring the soil around it with it as well. So I really like to use those. And then, and then checking, it looks good in terms of where it's at in, in the, uh, this one has more of the oxen on the out, the hormone on the outside, so shake it off a little bit. So you can see they're in there nicely. Now the next thing I, I'm going to be doing is putting in more of these guys in here and then putting a plastic bag over top and a rubber band on the bottom, basically creating a little greenhouse effect so that the plant will then uh, have enough moisture to also create those roots because this is moist you want to keep it moist but you don't want to get it sloppy wet as mentioned because this is moist also by putting the bag on it it may stay moist and create condensation so i don't have to do much watering which is very handy but if it does dry out you definitely want to water a little bit water it to moisten it test it with your uh with with something like this uh, with a, one of these dowels you can stick it in and pull it back out after you've watered and if it's the the uh, soil is sticking and it looks wet then that means it's wet enough in there and you can go down just a tad right around where the where the roots would be too as well. You don't have to go way down in there because the roots aren't gonna be down there that quickly. And then let's see, so that tells you a lot about this. I'm gonna be doing that plastic bag procedure in a, gonna be doing a um, rooting some pothos cuttings coming up so you can see that as well. So this gives you a really good idea of how to do this, how to use this really, really, really helpful uh, tool as well. The rooting hormone is just such a helpful tool uh, to get things going. And the thing about rooting cuttings is that you can be, it can be going really, really well for you. And then all of the sudden something goes wrong. So the quicker you can do, do this process of propagating, getting the plants to root, growing them to get, and then getting them out. This is a rooting medium. So we will be taking them, I will be taking these out of this rooting medium once they root and put them into regular potting soil because this is just for rooting. So the uh, the faster you can do that whole process, the better to, to, to not have any problems along the way. As mentioned, you want the rooting hormone to be fairly new for the most effectiveness. And that is it for this really, really handy tool and then you see how to use it as well. Uh, this rooting hormone that I have used, I will not be putting it back in there because it has become contaminated, especially when you stick, when you stick the, uh, the, the cuttings in there. And also even when you touch this on the cuttings, it becomes contaminated. So you wanna throw away what's left. So that's why you only wanna put a teeny bit in at a time and use it. You don't need a lot as you saw, but if you're doing a whole bunch, obviously you'll need more, but I would suggest putting it in a little bit at a time and then putting more in when it's uh, when you've used up what you've got or almost used up what you've got. So there you have it. We will have eventually some really nice plants here from this. You get a good close up there. And then eventually we will have more of this pretty plant here, which has pretty goldfish-like orange blooms on it when it's blooming. Thank you for stopping by today. Please leave any comments about any indoor gardening tutorials you'd like to see. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video. And please check the bell when you'd like to be notified when new videos are released.